Hi guys, it's Nick. Um, I'm going to give you a build thread of the SAS or Sawhead Sailplanes Wild Thing. Um, I must say right at the start, I have no financial or professional links with um, Sawhead Sailplanes. This was literally a Christmas present from my wife. Now, the reason I've chosen this particular glider is this is the Wild Thing, this is the Mini Wild Thing. The difference is, is this one is um, 30 inch wingspan and the standard wild thing is 46 inches or 117 seven, seven centimeters. Um, I'm just going to go through everything that's in the box. It's very uh, neatly packed. Uh, so what we're first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go through all the kit contents. I'm just going to lay everything out uh, on the kit that's here so that you can uh, run this through and make sure you've got all the bits as well. Okay guys, so um, I've got all the bits and pieces out. Um, I meant to mention at uh, the introduction, the reason I've chosen the smaller version is, is that this will fit lovely into the back, fully assembled into a very small car, or I actually want it that will fit very nicely into my motorhome. So if we go away for the weekend, and my big love is hand gliding, and we can't go hand gliding for any reason, this is gonna be sat there and I, it's ready to use. Now, what you actually get in the kit, is you've got a set of wings and at the moment uh, these are what these this is EPP foam it's very robust and we will be speaking about its robustness and how to clean it later so we've got the wings we have a fuselage and uh, very nicely they've cut already a nice battery hatch in there and it has some very nice strengthening ply that's um, loaded already which is very good uh, the other thing we've got, we've got some glue. This is for joining the wings together. Uh, we've got what's known as crossweed tape. This is the real strength of the aircraft, uh, but uh, it's a little bit prone to getting damaged by sunlight, but this is something that we will talk along as we, as we go through the build. Then you've got your um, colouring tape. Now, mine came with red. I didn't particularly uh, request red. You can, there are other colours on the website. Um, there are other ways of actually covering these gliders, but I am going to try and stick to the traditional plans of how it's done um, with saw head sailplanes. So also you'll have a little pack of bits and pieces. So in there is going to be, there's two bolts wood straps for the uh, tailplane. There's some self-adhesive tape. There's two control horns. There's also two control push rods and there's also what's called two clevis pins and also the screws. It's worth just getting those out and making sure that you've got two of each of the horns, two each of the clevises of the push rods and you've got the, uh, you're going to need four screws for that all to go together. Also you're going to get uh, a pair of these which are the elevons. There's two of those in the kit so don't get throwing those out thinking it's packaging. Also You've got one fin which comes with the kit. Now, my first real tip. In the box, you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner is this little pad. Don't chuck that out. It is the perfect sanding block which you can put uh, sandpaper over and it's absolutely perfect for using this to help sand the model. So remember, don't chuck that out. Folks, um, I am going to post the instructions somewhere sort of here as we go along. But the first part of the instructions is to do with the wings. So what I've done is I've got uh, one of the wing blanks out. And you'll notice at the moment the leading edge is square. That needs to be rounded off. And also this wing tip is quite thick at the moment. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to sand that down um, into a nice profile which I will I'll sand it down and then I'll show you now because these are cut with a hot wire you are left with some of the debris on the actual wing and we want to remove that otherwise it's going to spoil the covering so if you get don't chuck the blanks that the wings come in if you get one of those just sit it down like so you can actually feel around it as it says in the instructions and pick little bits off I actually think if you get the block that I mentioned to you to start off with, and if you just rub over like so, so literally it's like 
the EPTs on EPT, what you'll find is, and this is where a hoover's gonna come in handy, so what you're gonna see me doing in a moment is, I'm just gonna literally go all over this, and I'm just literally, it's, it's taken 90% off. So all I'm gonna now do is, I'm gonna hoover this, and then have a feel round, flip it over and do the other side, and then the next thing is we're going to um, sand this to a nice rounded profile and then just uh, smooth that over so it's a nice, nice tapered edge. So I've taken all the rough stuff off the top and the bottom and what I've done is you can see I've just gently tapered that over but I'm keeping the wing actually in the wing bed and that helps just to keep it supported. If you just go to the off the end there, don't go too far and what I've done is I've just with this very quite coarse, you don't want to go mad and you'll notice that what I actually find, I don't know if everybody else is the same, but I actually find this stuff prefers to be sanded just one way. I think if you start going backwards and forwards, you end up getting ripping lumps off. you notice how I've just taken that taper over down, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just wrap, round that off, don't go mad, and then the underneath, I've just um, come here underneath. I'm just going to just go the same way. Now I'm not tapering the underneath. I'm just going to round it off just a little bit, just to take that sharp edge off of. And that actually looks about job done. So I've just rounded that to a nice aerofoil shape, and um, we've tapered the tip down just a little bit. Uh, we've gone in about a oh, century and a half, I suppose, from about there, and just slowly taking it off. Um, particularly when you're doing sort of slope combat, and you don't want to be making these too thin. If you start crunching into barbed wire fences and stuff like that, it'll break off. But I think that's more than plenty there, uh, because what we've done is we've not removed the dimensional stability of the material by sanding it too much. Um, now, when both of these are done, the other thing is I would say is you just have a little feel around. If it just feel a little, still a little bit bobbly, just literally, just give it a couple of licks with some sandpaper to get this block. I'm using any sanding block. You can actually use the block out of the kit, and uh, which I use to remove the debris, and you can actually wrap some uh, 120 grit over that. But I'm fortunate I've got these anyway. So I'm literally just gonna just if I if I can feel anything, but don't go mad. You just want it like relatively smooth, and you'll feel the little bits that are puckering up anyway. And just have to here. you want to try and keep that edge nice. You don't want to roll in this trailing edge off as well. So that's fine. So and then the other thing, important thing to do, is to make sure hoover up afterwards because um, this area when we come to covering literally has to be sterile of any dust. So I'm just gonna crack on with the other side and then uh, we'll get to the next step. Okay, so I've given these good sanded and I've given them a good hoovering. But, and we're gonna go over the hoovering a bit more a bit later because it, it's quite critical on this. But the next thing in the instruction says that you've got to uh, get your radio gear prepared and ready. So particularly for those people who've, um, perhaps this is their first build, it mentions here about remove the mounting lugs from two standard servos. Well I've got two standard servos. And that's a standard servo. Um, these are the lugs. And this is the one I've already removed the lugs from. Little top tip here. My advice is um, when you're taking that lug off, um, I just use a, a pair of uh, steel clips and clip them off and then trim it off with a safety razor. But, little tip, just put some tape around the back of there so that when you're cutting this lug off, 
you're not going to end up cutting through the cables because that really is going to spoil your day is then cutting through these uh, cables into the servo right where it joins because that would be very difficult to replace. So what we're going to do is, is that we're just going to make sure as with the plans we're going to get the orientation right so you're looking for the servo arm is to go at the back and the wire is going to come round and very cleverly saw head sailplanes have even thought about that they put a little channel in the fuselage so all I'm doing now is, is I'm just going to pop that in there um, I will show you a photograph of where it goes it's quite critical on this model because you've actually got a channel um, so the servo is actually going to sit inside the servo arm is going to sit inside this channel so it's quite important we get that position just right and the one last thing to do is just to plug your radio gear in everything that you're going to use on the plane we're just going to plug in so remember always with uh, any remote control make sure any power settings are set to zero always switch the transmitter on first and then I'm just going to power up my um, receiver I've got a green light from a receiver and I'm just checking that I've got these two servos are working perfectly and that they are centered and when I mean centered it means just like that that they're not cranked over because when you then get them in the aircraft if you're if that's your center like so uh, what will happen is you'll find that um, you'll, you'll go out of trim on the glider so you want to be 90 degrees up the arms want to be both be 90 degrees up um, make sure that they're working properly and then we're going to put these to one side now with the lugs cut off ready to do the covering so folks we're up to covering the uh, wing quite specific instructions about doing this but the first thing I cannot emphasize enough make sure that you've hoovered your work surface properly and the other thing is make sure that you go over the whole of the wing with this like so and make sure that you've removed every small bit of dust or debris <clears throat> okay um, we've hoovered the wing another little tip here you get a little bit of the cross weave tape fold it over you can actually just go around just to make sure that you've got no other bits which the hoover might have missed now in the instructions it mentions putting the wings back in their beds um, I don't fancy doing that the reason being is the beds are quite dirty and they really need cleaning so I've got a lovely clean surface here the first piece of covering has got to go over the trailing edge so strip one is literally going to go you start on the top surface you roll it over the, the trailing edge and then literally the same the other side don't worry if you're a couple of mil out it doesn't really matter now little tip don't pull this really hard I literally just get my trailing edge hanging over the edge of the table and then all I'm going to do is about halfway fairly unscientifically I'm just going to literally gently drop that on there and I'm just going to gently run my fingers like not pushing too hard and I'm just going to cut that tape at the moment just roughly to the end and I'm going to make sure that that's all touching down nicely and then what we're going to do is is we're then just going to slowly roll that over now what I normally would do is run that over like so so it's now got a little bit of a curve to it and I just run my finger down there gently not pushing too hard just so the, the glue is just beginning to take now under surface what you want to try and do is grab it uh, and get it as much over as possible all together just like that now there you go so I'm now just going to rub this down and then what we're going to do is we're just going to finish the edge and to finish the edge I'm going to cut the end and because at the end here we are not got a lot of curve to worry about I'm just going to go around there like so and take that last bit off and then now 
when you start to get more of a compound curve what you'll actually have to do is just start to put some little nicks in it to get it over the curve so that's what I'm doing now just putting a couple of little nicks in it and I'm just pushing that over like so and then I'm just making sure that the other side then comes over look at that beauty now if you want you can just give it a little bit of a rub with a tissue just to get that to bed in just a bit more but there's something to be careful of look I've just gone and pushed a little bit of tissue off same this end bearing in mind that that's going to be glued so what we're going to do is we don't want to be rolling the tape over on this we want to be finishing the trailing edge end um, literally um, flush fitting so I'm just going to put a nick in that there like so and then I'm going to get my hand out of the way because you can all see what I'm doing now you can, I'm using scissors, I've got a very sharp pair of scissors here, you can use a knife. Now be aware that when you're using any of these products um, they do blunt quite quickly with this tape. Um, so um, anybody's, if particularly mums are into sewing or anybody's into sewing and you happen to have acquired their uh, dressmaking scissors be very careful that they uh, don't spot it because you could be in trouble right so as it says on the plans that's strip one strip two is now going to be um, on the bottom surface and literally all we're going to do is we're going to add the tape but as we add the tape they're going we're going to overlay by about six mil all the way to the top Uh, one thing I would say is I'm just adding this now. Um, don't pull this tape really hard. So if you've got it on the wing like so, don't pull that really tight because what it'll end up doing is um, it'll end up puck puckering the wing. So you'll end up with a wing with a massive warp in it. So literally just if you oh, it's almost just laying it on top and then massaging it into place. Okay, having covered both wings, now we have the joiming. The plans, uh, the instructions say to use this PVA glue. And the idea is, is that you apply the PVA glue to both of these surfaces and then you wait for it to uh, dry clear and then you literally push them together like so. And then we're then going to put a little bit of tape across the middle. Now, what I've done is just so that I don't make a mess of my bench. And then a little top tip for you there. I've just run two strips of the uh, cross weave tape. This stops making a mess. And if you're not using this for another workbench, it's worth considering. So all we're gonna do is, we're just gonna use the kitchen towel. I'm gonna roll mine up like so. And um, I'm literally just gonna apply this. Um,
Okay, it's finally gone clear. That's actually taken about an hour. It's quite cold in this room. Um, I understand from the manufacturers that you can actually heat this with the glue guns, but my advice would be is, is that um, I'd go and have your tea or have your lunch when this is doing so. Basically, these are now ready to go together. So we just match them up like so. And then when we're happy that they're together, um, I'm now gonna run a little bit of this tape all the way over and on the bottom surface as well. And that's the wings done. I'm gonna leave these flat overnight and then uh, we'll crack on with the rest tomorrow.